everybody. Welcome to Water Tech with Todd. I'm your host, Todd Schneider. And today we're going to be talking about the Watts Dead Level Trench Drain. And more importantly, we're going to be talking how to choose the right model for the right project. All right. So let's discuss our trench drain. So this is our Watts Dead Level Trench Drain. Uh, we, it's just going to come in 6 inch wide. And then we can also do it in 12 inch wide. And then we also have them uh, that are a little thinner for uh, basically pouring them into parking garages or any sort of shallow decking. All right, so when we're dealing with our six inch wide, that's going to be uh, just our basic everyday uh, trench drain. Uh, and a lot of times these are being used because when you have a floor drain and maybe you have a four or five or an eight inch, uh, just regular grate, we have a hard time getting all the water from one area all into it. Trench drain is a great way of saying, hey, I'm going to span my entire area. I will pick up all the water and I don't have to work on just hitting one individual spot. We have now maybe up to an 80 foot drain. Any water that's coming in is going to go straight in, down the drain, and then out the building. All right, so when we're talking about a trench drain, especially this Watts dead level, we have a couple real main components. Uh, on the bottom here, this is going to be our poly trench itself. Um, right above that, we're going to be getting into the frame. Now, this is going to be very important when we start choosing what we need. And then also up top, we're going to have grates. Uh, we'll have all kinds of different grates from a ductile iron to a poly. We've got stainless steel, stainless steel reinforced, and that's all going to come into effect when we start talking about how to build it. But really, it's going to make your effect is going to happen when we talk about our weight rating and how to choose that right model. So now let's start choosing the right model uh, for the right project that you have out there. So I will tell you, we have two different frames. So this is going to be our poly frame. Uh, and then we'll also have a ductile iron frame as well. Now, the reason this is so important is we're looking for a weight rating. We need to know that, hey, this is going to be poor and maybe a warehouse floor. Uh, and what we need to know is on a weight rating is how much weight is going to be put on this at any point in time. All right, so we've got our poly frame all set up. Now, I will tell you, the poly frame and the grade are all going to determine that weight rating. And it's going to be always between an A, B, C, D, all the way up to F. And that's all based on what is going to be going on here. I will tell you, if you're working with a poly, the highest weight rating, no matter what grade you put on it, is only going to be a C. If we have a project like we're going to work on today where I'm putting this in a warehouse where we could have heavy vehicles, forklifts, anything else, we already know right away, hey, I have some very high weight ratings. I can't go with this poly. We need to move to something else. And that's what we're going to talk about is how to build the model number you need for the exact project you have. Okay, so like we talked about today's project, we're going to be putting in a trench drain and coming up with the right model number for our warehouse. Again, we're going to have forklift uh, operating over top of these, and it could also be parking. So I need to choose something between my frame and my grate to be able to handle the capacity of that forklift that's on there. And I will tell you, if you have the option um, that maybe a forklift may come in, maybe it won't, always choose a heavier model than what you think you may need because at any point in time, if we would park that right, if that forklift would be parked here, we may damage the actual trench itself and that's going to cause a major problem. We'll have to actually dig this all up and then start over again. So always choose something heavier than what you might think you need. All right, so obviously we're working in a warehouse. We got some forklifts. So right now I've got a poly. I can already say, hey, let's get this out of here. I can't do this with a poly. I'm going to need to go more with a ductile frame because I need to get my weight rating up. So now I have my ductile frame. I've decided, okay, this is the frame I want. Let's start building that model number. All right, so step one is we got our weight rating. We know we're using a ductile frame. So the first letter that we're going to come up with in our model number is going to be D. Okay, now that we know we're using a ductile frame, I've got my D here for my ductile frame. We need to now know our length, which is normally the easy part. We're going to say, hey, I'm working with 50 foot. Second part is we're going to write 50. That's telling me I have a ductile frame and I'm running at 50 foot. Okay, so now we've gotten our frame and we've gotten our, 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 uh, our length. We want to look at our outlets. And I will tell you, uh, with every Watts dead level, every section that we have 
has always has a bottom outlet. Now you'll find very quickly that these don't have any holes. So if you decide I want to use it, knock that out. If you decide, hey, I don't want to use a bottom outlet, I'd like to go more with an end outlet. Don't knock this out and then you'll have an actual outlet, four inch, easy for a no hub band or a ProFlex band to fit on there. And this is a female by male. It'll lock right in there. Couple self-tapping screws, but we always have an option of a bottom outlet and an outlet. You just get to choose what you want. So on this project, I've decided, hey, I don't know exactly, but I think I'm just gonna go with a bottom outlet uh, or could choose it. So let's get our next letters up there. And because we're using a bottom outlet or an end outlet, the next one I'm gonna have is going to be an EO, which is gonna tell me right off the bat, I have ductile iron, 50 foot, and I'm using an end outlet, or again, because they're always built in, we have a bottom outlet. All right, you say, hey, Todd, listen, on this project here, it's a little bit different than the norm. I don't want the bottom. I don't want the end. I want something like a center outlet. Well, we may bring our slope going this way and our slope going this way. It's fine. So what we're going to do then is say, hey, I want a center outlet. So we'll change our EO down to a CO, which is our center outlet. The only thing that we'll ask is you say, hey, I want exact center. So our exact center will come at the total length. So I've got a 50 foot. We'll put that center outlet roughly right around 25 foot. And again, you'll have that bottom outlet to work with. Okay, now we have a really crazy project. Maybe we say we're gonna be running this as a 50 foot, but I need my outlet maybe at 40 foot. So I'm running 40 foot here, a center outlet, then I need it coming off here. Or we say, hey, we actually have the ability to run this in a complete square. We have 90s and Ts uh, where we have a lot of custom units. Um, on that section there, again, because it's just the outlets, not a problem, what we're going to ask you to do is just put an XO, which is going to stand for a custom outlet. We can put one outlet, two outlets, whatever you're looking for. Uh, that XO is going to tell me right away, hey, I've got a custom outlet. It's a little bit different. And the only thing I'll just ask is, hey, a quick pencil drawing, show me where you want those outlets to be, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make this work for you. So we've got our project. We're going through that um, through that warehouse. We've decided, hey, you know what? We're just going to use an end outlet or, again, our bottom outlet. So I got my EO. Now what we got to do is we're going to go through and we're going to choose uh, what grate. And, again, very important to choose the right grate because the frame and the grate will actually determine how much weight can be put on here. Okay, so on this project, I know I'm going to be having semis pulling through. I've definitely got some forklifts, uh, a lot of construction vehicles. I also have some very heavy material that's going to be possibly sitting on top of this. So I'd like to get all the way up to a class F, which is going to be the heaviest weight rating out there. So on this one, I've decided I'm going to go with a ductile iron frame and I'm going to go with my ductile iron grate because now I know Anything I put on here, we're not going to have to worry about this cracking, crushing, or collapsing on itself. So I've chosen the ductile iron. So the next thing in my model number is I'm going to go to D and I. That's going to stand for ductile iron grate. All right, so we've got this old bill. We understand the model numbers, but you're saying, hey, Todd, listen, that's a real industrial grade. I need something fancy. I need something pretty. This may be in, uh, in front of a lobby or in front of a front door where we have a lot of people walking, and we just don't want to see this black ductile iron. We'd like to go with something more like a stainless, maybe stainless steel, perforated stainless steel, um, slotted, or even we're going to go with uh, something a little prettier than that and say we're going to go with something very light duty only foot traffic, no motor vehicles, no forklifts. Let's build that model real quick so we can show you how that gets done. So let's choose our next model. Now this model here, we're looking for more of a class A, something that people are just gonna walk on, uh, but people are gonna be seeing, we wanna make that pretty and say we're going with a class A. Again, something light duty. We don't, we're not worried about forklifts driving over it. We don't need to spend a bunch of money and have to deal with the weight of the ductile iron. We're just going to go with our poly frame. And remember, first letter in our uh, model number is going to now be, it's going to be P. That's going to automatically tell me that we're using a poly frame. It's going to be a lightweight. 
All right, next step, we're choosing our length. Now, this one's not going to be 50 foot long. It's going in front of a doorway. We're going to say 15 foot. Uh, with our 15, now that I know my, my poly frames here, we will add a 15 dash. Now, remember, what are we choosing next? We're choosing our outlet. Again, always it can come with an EO, which gives you that end outlet or bottom outlet. Standard, it's coming across the board. Center outlet, and we say on this one, I'm going to be going 15 foot. So about seven foot down, I want to jump in and put my center outlet. So we're going to go with CO. Now let's choose our grates. All right, so now we get to pick out our grating. Uh, we're looking some a little bit fancier. And Watts has multiple different. We've got everything from stainless steel perforated, stainless steel reinforced, which gives you stainless steel with some extra weight rating below it. We also have our bronze, or we could even go with a poly. Okay, so on this project, I've decided, hey, I want to go with stainless steel perforated. I want this to really look nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the SP, which is stainless steel perforated. So our next here is going to be stainless steel perforated. That's going to give me my grate. So we've got two different model numbers. We've got a really heavy duty with our ductile iron. Uh, we've also got something a little bit fancier, something a little nice. Uh, one thing I will throw out is... Uh, along with this stainless steel perforated grate, we can also add a stainless steel frame guard. What that's going to do is give you a complete stainless steel look. So we'll have our grate. We'll have a frame guard, which is going to wrap just around the frame. It's not going to be installed. It just lays over. But when the concrete's poured up, it gives you a beautiful stainless steel by stainless steel by stainless steel look all the way across. All right, so hopefully this helped you out understanding that why we're always asking for weight rating. Remember, a lot of weight can go on top of these. But also remember, here at Disney McLean, if you're in the Ohio, Indiana, or Kentucky market, feel free to reach out to us. We will assist you in putting any of the model numbers that you need. Uh, but a lot of the questions we're going to ask are weight, length, where's our end outlet, and then what grade we're going to be. I like all my end of, all my videos I end up with. I do ask you guys to like and subscribe. If you like it, I know that it's helping everybody out. If you subscribe, it will actually give you a little bit of notification every time I make a new video. Um, also, if there's something else that you have or that you want, we've actually chose the dead level trench drain because of some comments that were sent to us. So if there's anything else in our line card that you have questions that you'd like a video, please send it over to us. But again, please like and subscribe and share this video with anybody who may need it. Thank you.